Welcome to a very special episode of Keeping the Quality High Under Quarantine. Today we're celebrating a quarantine birthday. It happened to be Kendra's birthday today. This is the second birthday we're celebrating under quarantine. Your cameraman behind the screen there, yeah. he celebrated his 13th birthday a few weeks back. So today we're cooking one of Kendra's favorite dishes she loves was a baked haddock. We're going to serve that with some rice pilaf and a side of saute veggies. And she has a beautiful limoncello martini that she's going to stir up to serve with the dinner tonight. So come and join me as we keep the quality high under quarantine. All right, now we're going to talk about baked haddock. What we have here is three nice haddock fillets we picked up from Shaw's down the street. I happen to like the quality of their fish selection, so that's why I continue to support Shaw's. What we want to get is three nice looking fillets like this. Let me show you how exactly we do this. So we want to take the tail part that kind of looks a little ugly, we want to fold that under. And then it kind of shapes the fillet. Now if you have a real thick end right here, what I tend to do is I kind of like to score that with, with my knife. Just so the cooking time throughout the whole fish is even and we get a nice baked haddock. Hey now. Now the portion size all depends on how you like it. We love baked haddock so our portion size tends to run towards the 12 to 16 ounce. But over here, the kids portion, we like to make about an 8 ounce fillet. So we do the same thing here and we're going to score the thick part so we have even cooking time all the way through. So now we got our three fillets set up in our pan. It's an aluminum foil pan, easy for cleaning, reduces the time spent at the sink. I'm going to wash my hands according to C the CDC regulations and when we come back I'm going to season this up nicely and start our rice pilaf and seasonal veg. Go get them. Hi, welcome back. So now we got our haddock, we got our veggies. The veggies we chose and one of Kendra's favorites is broccoli and I brought in the carrots because of the color contrast it just brings more uh, eye appeal to the plate. Um, I like to season my fish always with a little salt and a little pepper. I think that's standard in the kitchen so we want to stick with what works. So we're going to hit it with a salt, we're going to hit it with a little pepper and then for a little herbs I like to go with a little bit of the thyme. It's uh, 535. I'm going to hit it with a little bit of our crushed basil. You know where this is from? This is from our last year's harvest. And then I'm going to hit it off with a little bit of that dill weed. You got to always be bringing in that dill weed. It goes great with fish and lemon. So, that's our basic seasoning. Oh, what's this guy here? The celery salt. The seasoning salt. Excuse me. Hey now. We're just going to go lightly with that. It's just going to bring more of that nice flavor. So let's talk our breadcrumbs. I use Ritz crackers. I like to use the sleeves. My ratio is one sleeve per person because I like a nice bakey, crusty baked haddock. I find it's best to have a nice crunchy layer of Ritz crackers. They're nice and buttery, nice and salty. I just take that package and I just crinkle it up just like you see here. And then that goes right into the bowl. And I already pre-seasoned those crackers with the same seasoning that we put onto our haddock. So we're going to continue to reutilize our same product throughout the dish so the flavors just magnify and we're keeping the quality high under quarantine. So now, let's lay them breadcrumbs down. I like to use my hand as a little wall to get a nice layer. And I like to have a little fine crumb and a little thick crack of crumbs here because it adds texture and a little bit of um, crunch to the dish which is real nice when you have a nice buttery rick crack of top in there now. now. And I'm going to take what we have left here and throw it on there. Boom, the oven's ready to go. Are you ready to go? Boom, so now we got our crumb topping. 
right there, looking real nice. We're going to add some water. We want to add water until about halfway up the, the fish so it allows time to steam and cook inside the pan. Now what I like to do is add a little drawn butter to the top of this, which I'll do off camera because I forgot to do that. What do you know? And then I'm going to come over here and we're going to start sauteing up our vegetables. I got our water getting ready for our rice pilaf here in the back. And we're going to put this right in the oven. Oh yeah, nice and hot. So come and join me in another couple minutes when we come back from our break. Hi, welcome back to keeping the quality high under quarantine. I'm your chef Adam Jump and we're serving up a baked haddock today. So I got my baked haddock ready to go. I just drizzled it with a little drawn butter. I'm going to take some leftover lemons that we had in our fridge, give it a nice squeeze and I'm going to leave it right in there. And that's going to bake with the haddock and it's going to add a nice aromic zestiness from that lemon. And it's just going to keep the quality of the baked haddock even higher. Oh. So I got my hat, had it going into an oven that was preheated at 350 degrees and I'm going to go from 15 to 21 minutes. 18 is the golden number of where I think it's the best flakiness and cooked all the way through at 18 minutes. So let's talk our sides. We have our rice pilaf which is just a box rice pilaf. Very simple. It's a very good rice pilaf, so it's always a go-to in our household. You got something, say something. Here we go. Next, we're talking our veggies. We're talking scraps. Now, a few things you can do with the scraps. One, you can save them, put them in the freezer, make a vegetable stock. Love to use the vegetable stock to make soups, to make other side dishes. Also, you can throw it in your compost. It will help break down, and come the fall time, you throw it into your your garden or maybe into your um, grass or flower bed and it's just going to add lovely nutrition, nutritional value to um, whatever you use it for whether it's your body or the earth. So we're going to throw our vegetable right in a nice hot pan and that's how you know you're cooking in the kitchen. So we're going to give that a little shake and bake and again I'm going to continue the same seasoning that we use throughout the recipe already. Salt, pepper, dill weed. Gonna hit it off with some of that dried basil from last year's harvest. And some of that thyme. It's 646. Just kidding. <laughs> so, I'm gonna get that all nice. We're going to get that nice and golden brown, a nice little roast to that from the pan. We got our rice coming to a boil, and then we're going to add in the rest of the ingredients. I spilled some of these pilaf kernels, hey now. So I got broccoli and I got carrots. I cut these carrots on a nice hard bias to give them that look that you see there. You know, it's something you learn in the chef business when you listen to a bunch of chefs you know what they're talking about. They'll teach you little things like that. Broccoli is just simple bite-sized carrots. You heard that in the background. You know what that is. That's that limoncello martini coming your way. So what I like to do here is add a little, a little water to the party. That's going to help get all that flavor at the bottom of the pan. And it's also going to steam and give a nice color to the carrots and broccoli. We've got our haddock bacon in the oven. Our water has come to a boil in the back for the rice pilaf, so we're going to add our packet. Bada bing. Okay now. Bada boom. Don't even worry about it. It's just a little rice. 
Check this out real quick. Hey now. Just gonna get that off there. It happens in the kitchens all the time. Stuff like that happens all the time in the kitchen. And you just gotta act quickly before things go crazy. You do. First thing you gotta do, just like in life, is breathe and just get through it. Remember that. So we got our rice, we got our veggie, we got our haddock. I'm gonna clean up this mess you see here. And when we come back, we're gonna plate it all up. So thank you for keeping the quality high on the quarantine. I'll see you in a couple minutes. Oh yeah, baby. We're keeping the quality high there. Let's take a look. Oh yeah. So we're gonna pull this out nice and gently. Okay. And that's our baked haddock, ladies and gentlemen. Whoa, we you now. All right, now since these were bigger fillets, we went an extra five minutes just to get that nice golden brown texture to our rice crumbs. Now let's talk plating procedure. We got our rice pilaf, we got our homemade vegetables. As you learn in the kitchen, it's always starch on the left, veg on the right. So we're gonna hit it with our broccoli and carrots. And then we're gonna go get some of that rice peel off, bring them to the party. Beautiful. I love rice peel off. I think any good home cooked meal at a kitchen table deserves rice peel off at least twice a week. Definitely. Boom. Now, for the moment of truth, we want to get the spatula directly underneath the fillet. Lift it up, and I'm going to tilt it at an angle just to get all those juices to drip off the side because we don't want it on our plate. Now, this looks like it could be my piece because that's a big boy. I'm going to put that right there. Oh. Okay, now. Come over here, get underneath that, drain that. Oh, where's this carver's piece? Boom. And then the birthday girl. Now we got the beautiful baked haddocks on the plate. We're gonna garnish with a little bit of our celery leaf we got from our wonderful hydroponic celery that we're growing right here, table side in front of our window. This is just gonna bring a little beautiful pop to the plate. Now Tommy, doesn't that look nice? If you know what I'm talking about. Boom. So let's bring these plates right over here and check out what we have in store. <laughs> All right, and we have our beautiful Caesar salad we're serving here on the side with our baked attic. We've got our homemade croutons. We're going to toss in two handfuls of that. We're going to put it off to the side. We're going to hit it with that wishbone. What are you wishing for this time, time of year in the quarantine? We're going to hit it with a little Caesar dressing. And we're going to hit it off with that Parmesan cheese. Give it a nice coating of that. Hey now. Hey now. Hey now. 
bone. And we're going to toss that gently. And then we're going to plate that up very nice over here. And our bowls on the side. Isn't that nice? We got that crouton in there for three reasons. One, because it just adds great nutritional value. Two, it adds some beautiful color in contrast to the plate. And three, it's because Kendra loves tomatoes and I love her. Boom. So we have our plate here. Take in what we have here. Kendra shook us up a nice lemon cello martini with a little absolute citron, lemon cello, a little triple sec. And some lime juice and lemon juice. Hey now, excuse me. We got beautiful background music. These are the happinesses right here from the 30s, 50s, 60s, 70s, and 80s. And yeah, she didn't want me to say it, so I'm not going to say it. So take a look at the cake. Happy birthday. Thank you for joining me on another episode of Keeping the Quality High on the Quarantine. I hope you had yourself a good time because I sure did. That's the birthday girl. And thank you. We'll see you again next time.